Hallelujah. Well, here we go into the book of Acts. And we are going to pick up at verse number 28 of chapter 21. And uh, I'm not going to, you know, the, this, this is the beginning. Uh, all of you know that uh, Paul was told not to go to Jerusalem. He was not, you know, he was warned over and over again about going to Jerusalem. And as soon as he got there, he immediately was confronted with trouble. However, as I pointed out before, in case you missed it, uh, trouble does not necessarily mean you are out of the will of God. You know, some people get that idea that, well, if I get confronted with something, if I, if I uh, follow God and hear from God and then I get run into a wall or I run into opposition, uh, sometimes people automatically think that that means God didn't tell them in the first place to do something. But you know, it, unless you're facing opposition, you're probably going in the wrong direction. <laughs> you know, um, I, there used to be a sign somewhere that I read about uh, how that, the, you know, salmon go upstream to spawn. They don't, they don't go with the flow. They're always uh, swimming against the current. And most Christians are true Christians, pe people who truly love God, are, are swimming against the current because we are in the minority in the world. We are in the minority in the world. One time I asked the, uh, uh, one of our guides that I had in Israel, he said, the reason Israel tries to get along and doesn't fight very much, they, they stay, they guard themselves, you know, from incoming fire but they don't try to in, instigate any problems because there's like eight billion Muslims and one million Jews. <laughs> so, so when you're in that kind of a situation, you know, you have to understand and count, your, count the situation where you face. Well, we need to understand that we are not in the major, majority. Even people who call themselves Christians, many of them are not truly committed to Christ. Some of them don't know Christ even. They call themselves Christians, but they're Christians in name only. And they go to church once a, once a week, maybe, or maybe just on Christmas and Easter is all they do. But they still call themselves a Christian. But if opposition comes against the true church of God, it will separate the sheep from the goats. Trust me, it will separate. And those who, are, who have the genuine relationship with Christ are the only ones who will stand when opposition comes. And it's not easy. You know, just because we're anointed of God and used of God and, and commissioned of God doesn't mean that it's easy to go through difficult times. You're still going to hurt. You're still going to feel discouraged sometimes. You're going to want to give up sometimes. All people, not just one or two of us, but no matter who you may think is such a great Christian, you don't know what goes on in the wee hours of the night when they are facing the obstacles of life. Most of them don't go out and broadcast it to you. But I'm going to tell you, if you sell out 100% to Jesus Christ and you serve him with all your heart, you're not going to be the most popular person in town. You know, the Bible says, woe unto the man of whom everyone speaks well of. Woe unto the man that everyone speaks well of. And, and may I say to you, that's why we shouldn't believe everything we hear. Come on. You know, look past the statement. Just because somebody says it doesn't mean it's true. I don't care if that's on the news media. I don't care if it's from the pulpit. I don't care if it's just in conversation on the streets. Sometimes we believe things just because somebody said it. Come on. Well, they said so-and-so. Well, what's the, what backs up what they said? How have you proven what they said to be true? You know, just because somebody tears another person down doesn't mean that person's what they're saying they are. True. And we need, to be, we need to be real about that and ask God to forgive us for buying into that thing. So these people, 
Look at what it says. I'm in verse number 28. That's where I stopped last week. It says, crying out, men of Israel, help. This is the man who teaches. They're, they're crying out, trying to get people to hurt Paul. This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. How many of you know that's not the truth? Do y'all know that's not the truth about Paul? He was not teaching against the people, against the law, and against this place. He was not. But they were proclaiming it. And they stirred up a crowd. Come on. Don't get to be a part of the crowd. Amen. It's a dangerous place to be. Yep. Jumping on somebody's bandwagon. It's a dangerous place to be. Be careful what you're supporting. Be careful what you're saying and repeating if you don't have ironclad knowledge or truth behind us. We're living in a time when there is more. Well, the Bible says it. What did Jesus warn number one about, about the end of time? The first thing he talked about when people talked about the end of time was what? Deception. Deception. Yes, all of you knew that. How many times did Jesus say, don't be deceived? Because the longer the earth tarries, the larger and more, more overwhelming is deception. And it's not, you know, when I was a kid, a young person, I thought it was just talking about preachers in the pulpit. How many of y'all thought that? <laughs> That's what I thought. I thought this scripture, when Jesus said, don't be deceived, he was talking about don't be deceived by preachers trying to preach, preach false doctrine. Well, that's true. You don't need to be deceived by preachers that are preaching false doctrine. But there's much here, you know, in the world we're living in now, there's deception everywhere. Everywhere. You hear people talking, even, even just in conversations around just conversations. People are just spouting out all kind of mess they don't care if it's true or not. There's no, uh, there's no value in the truth these days. It's all about power. If I can tell you whatever I want to tell you and I can make you follow me, then I have power over you. And so consequently, you know, big crowds might follow somebody, where it be a preacher or a politician or a or, a, or somebody else. Doesn't matter who it is. Big crowds might follow somebody. It doesn't mean they're based on the truth. And there might be a little small crowd with somebody who's shouting the truth with all their heart. So these guys immediately begin to shout out these things about Paul that they knew would stir up the crowd. If you don't think these people in authority, whether it's pastors or leaders, they know what it pushes the buttons of the crowd. Come on, they know. They know if they, if they accuse somebody of trying to take your Social Security away, you'll get mad at that person. Well, let me tell you something, ain't nobody trying to take your Social Security away. <laughs> nobody. But if they can stir you up to believe that, hmm, come on, you're going to get in a real fuzz about it. Next thing you know, you're all up into something, and it's not even true. And there's other things. Anything they think they can stir you up. They're stirring up the crowd. Uh, you know, the reason they leaked that information from the Supreme Court concerning uh, abortion was because they wanted to stir up the abortion crowd. And they're succeeding, aren't they? And they've said this summer that the people who, have a, who are for abortions are going to burn the, the United States down. If that, if that thing gets passed in, in the Supreme Court, they're going to burn the United States down. They're going to burn the Supreme Court down. They're going to do all kinds of damage to those people who want us to have the abortions, who want to maintain abortions. They're going to tear the place up. So they're saying all this for a reason. They want to scare people. They want people to get out in the streets and start causing harm and danger because they are using, I want you to understand, people use lies to make you do certain things. They want you to respond a certain way to certain things, and they use lies. That's why you've got to be careful and guard. The Bible talks about guarding your mind. 
You guard your mind and be sure you're not. And it's, so they are accusing Paul of being against the people, against the law, and against, it, against Jerusalem and the temple. He is not. And then it says, and for their, and for, and for then brought Greeks, it says, and they also brought Greeks into the temple and have polluted the holy place. Paul did not bring, these guys who were with Paul were Jews who were doing a Nazarite vow. They were not Greeks. I want you to understand how strong the scripture here is showing us that we must guard our minds and not believe lies. Don't believe it locally. Don't believe it on your job. Just because somebody comes along and tells you something somebody said don't mean it's true. And say, did you know what they said about you behind your back? Don't just swallow that right. and go along with it and feel like you're mad at that person now and you don't even know anything about it except what a second party said. We have to guard our minds from these things and not get caught up in them because the next thing you know, you'll be offended about something you don't even really know for sure if it's true. You will become offended and, and then you'll be in trouble. And so it's important to guard our minds. And it says, for they had seen before with him in the city, this guy it was, uh, was an uh, Ephesian, and they supposed that that guy had been brought by Paul into the temple. They assumed that Paul had brought that guy they saw him with before into the temple. He did not bring him. That was an assumption. And the, listen to this next sentence. It says, and all the city was moved. This big lie, it might not have stirred you up, but these were Jews, and to them the temple was sacred, and Jerusalem was sacred, and when this, these people started shouting out this junk, all the city was moved. God help us. God help us. And to run against that crowd, I just want you to know, is a hard thing to do. When the crowd starts getting moved and moves forward to try to move against them, it's like, it's, it's, it's dangerous. But we have to. And it says, and the people ran together and took Paul and drew him out of the temple. Now what they really did was drug him out and is beating him to death, that's what it amounts to. And they would have because the only thing that stopped them was because they raised such a ruckus there in the middle of Jerusalem that it stirred up the Roman guards who were the ones in charge. And it says they were about to kill him, but the chief, chief captain of the band uh, heard about the uproar and they immediately took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them and they, they saw what was going on and they took Paul out of the crowd and they said, uh, the, the notes say he was probably lifted up on their shoulders above the crowd because the crowd was so fierce and so forceful and carried over to a place in a stair stairwell so he could be carried up away from the crowd. And so because the, the authorities showed up, at least they still had respect for authority, the authorities showed up, they stopped beating Paul and they would have killed him if they could have. Then the chief captain came near and took him and commanded that he be bound with two chains and demanded who he was and what he had done. And some cried out one thing and some another among the multitude. In other words, the multitude really didn't all know why they were even there. Why? Because when the guy said, what's going on, they all started shouting out something different. So they were just there. They, they really didn't know. Don't be, don't be a dumb sheep. I know that's a crude way to say it. Don't, you, you know, we are his sheep, the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice. And, and so I don't, another, you know, another shepherd, they won't follow. They say, and you've heard the story of the sheep and how that 
the shepherd has, a, has his own little group of sheep. And at night, all the shepherds would come together and bring all their sheep into one, I don't know what you call them. Sheepfold. Sheepfold, thank you, Brother David. Started to say something else that wasn't right. <laughs> anyway, and, and, and so they'd all rest and have all their sheep bedded down for the night, all mixed in together. But when it was time to get up in the morning and go to grazing pastures, the sheep would call his, the shepherd would call his sheep. And his sheep would follow him. And then another shepherd would get up and call his sheep, and his sheep would follow him until all the sheep were with their shepherd. I don't want to be deterred by the voice of the wrong shepherd. Just because there's a crowd doesn't mean that it's of God. Just because the numbers are big. You know, we look at things way differently from the way God looks at it. This crowd in Jerusalem were all religious people. All of them were religious. And that's why they were mad. If they had been non-religious people, it wouldn't have mattered to them one bit what Paul was doing there in Jerusalem. But because they were so furious at Paul, they formed their own God and followed the voice of the shepherd who was not godly. And this shepherd led them to be deceived into believing something that was erroneous and not, correct, not right. Church, this is the greatest problem that God saw at this age that we're living in. The greatest problem the church would face in these last days is to, is to be deceived. You've got to be strong. All of you have, sent, have known people who fell away. You've known people that gave up and quit because somebody sold them the bill of goods that said, if you're a Christian, you won't ever have any problems. And they became a Christian on false pretenses. Amen. And when it didn't work out that way, they were ready to quit. They were told every prayer you pray is going to get answered. You pray one time and you claim it and you got it. And they prayed, and it didn't work, and they fell away. I'm telling you, just because the crowd is big does not mean that God has got a sanction on it. So we've got to guard our minds and guard our hearts so that we're following the right shepherd. There's only one shepherd that laid down his life for the sheep, and we better follow him. And it said, and when he came up on the stairs, so it was that he was born of the soldiers for the violence of the people, so he was up on their shoulders, for the multitude of the people followed after crying. Listen to these next words. Think if you've ever heard them before. Away with him. You know, Paul was in pretty good company. He was so much like Jesus that the people hated him just as much as they hated Jesus. Jesus told us that would happen. He said, they've hated me and they'll hate you. There gotta be people that hate you for what you stand for. You're not standing very loud. You're not standing very loud. Now they won't tell you that. They won't say, I hate you because you're a Christian. No, they don't tell you that. It's like people that drop their kid out of the academy. I'm gonna quit the school. I don't like it really. They just won't pay their bill. That's why they drop, but they don't tell the truth. Come on. They don't tell the truth. Now, I could tell the truth, but I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
but they don't tell the truth because they, I don't know what. People just want to, people just like to lie. I think there's, my daddy used to say there's some people who climb from a telephone pole to tell a lie rather than stand on the ground and tell the truth. <laughs> but what you need to know is that no matter what the crowds are doing, they followed after him, crying away with him. They did the same thing to Jesus. You know, the Bible says in one place, you have not resisted unto blood. We haven't. We haven't. None of us have had our back beaten till the blood came out yet. None of us have had to take that stand that says, you know, none of us. We haven't, by the grace of God, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful Amen. for God's divine hand of protection and, and the safety that he's had over us. I'm so thankful for that. But I'm going to tell you, no matter what happens, we must stand even if we stand against the crowd because you will. And as Paul was, was to be led into the castle, he said unto the chief captain, may I speak with you? And who said, can you speak Greek? And the reason he's saying, can you speak Greek is because he misunderstood who Paul was. He thought Paul was that Ethiopian that uh, had made an uproar. And so Paul said, no, I'm not that man. He told him he's from Tarsus, ends up telling him that he is from a place, of course, in Tarsus was a place of educated people, not ignorant people. And as you go on, you're gonna see that Paul actually is a Roman. And he stood on that before when he was in Philippi, if you remember, when they were beaten in Philippi and put in stocks. And then, then uh, he, he got around to check, letting them know he was a Roman. Then they wanted to just quietly get him out of town and not tell anybody they had already beaten up on this Roman. Uh, but they, uh, Paul said, no, you tell them to come down here and let us go out and let everybody know this. <laughs> <You> know? <laughs> Nothing is as good as just an open book that says, let's just let all the truth. Wouldn't it be nice if, if uh, somehow or another, you know, uh, I remember some time in my lifetime, a long time ago, watching some old movie where this guy could read everybody's thoughts. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? And people would be thinking opposite of what they were saying. He was reading their thoughts instead of hearing their voice. <laughs> Do y'all, did anybody ever watch that? Some old kind of stupid movie. I don't watch movies very often, so. But it's some old kind of stupid movie, and I thought if we could all just know what people are really thinking back behind that face, <laughs> I see some head nods this way. No, I think it'd be good for all of us if we knew the truth. <laughs> Willie says, no, he don't want to know the truth. <laughs> what, what, what about if, you, if, if a politician's speaking on TV and instead of hearing what they're saying, you're hearing what they're thinking? I, I think that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it accidentally slips out, slips out of their mouth anyway, doesn't it? It's like, oop, they said that and they shouldn't have. Come on. You know, what they really said was the truth in the first place. Um, but I want you to know that I'm, I'm being funny right now, but I do, I do think that it's very important that we personally stay true and honest ourselves and not, you know, don't ever be a conduit of somebody else's junk. You know, it's real easy to buy in to somebody's junk. You know, if somebody tells you, uh, you know, a bunch of us trying to lose weight right now, and if somebody tells you, boy, this is the way to lose weight, and they give you all this gobbledygook that they say to do, and then the next thing you know, we're spouting it out and we haven't even tried it. We don't even know if it's, we don't even know if it'll work or not, but just cause somebody said it, well, Boy, I'm going to go out and try to publicize this for them. You know, that's just a simple thing. But there's a lot of things in life. We'll just take somebody's information. We don't, we don't demand proof. We don't demand to know the full truth. And we go out with it. And that's what this crowd did. And they were, they were stirred up to the point that they were ready to kill a man. All based on a lie, all based on a lie. Do you understand me? So uh, you can come up here, Alicia. Just a quick thing, oh yeah. Sometimes we believe things because it's coming from people we trust. Yeah. We don't think twice to say, wait a minute, let me prove that. 
Yes. And no matter, no matter what, we always need to absolutely. Yes, absolutely. You can't, you can't ever just. Well, I know that person. I know they wouldn't ever lie to me. If you don't know it's true, then you have the right to say, "Well, show me that." Show me that. You know, I know it's one thing Young said about us when he came to this church that he was amazed at how much of the Bible we use. My husband particularly, you know, he's back-to-back -back scripture all the time <laughs> when he's preaching. And uh, he said he was amazed because where he came from, they might use one little verse or two little verses. <laughs> and then that was all you heard of the Bible for their whole sermon. Yep. But when he came here, and it should be that way. You know, it's not what Francis Allen says that matters. It's not what David Allen says that matters. It's not what any preacher says that matters. It's what thus saith God. And if we have not based thoroughly and completely the message that we're presenting to the people and prove to you by the word of God that these things are true, then we have no value. We have no value. When you, when you talk to young people, show them the truth. Don't just talk to them, expect them to take your word for everything. Show them the truth. They need to know why. You know, I don't, I don't ever mind the why question that's an honest question. I don't ever mind it, even from a child. Why? You know, my kids ask why. You know, I wanna go so-and-so, mama, and, they, and, and I'd say no. Why? Everybody else is. Well, I sit down with the Word of God and say, this is what I believe based on the Word of God. And, and, that, I, and they knew, both our girls knew growing up in our house that everything we lived our whole life was on the Word of God. And if the Bible said it, it was true. And if it didn't, that was up for question. It might not be true at all. And it should be that way because that's the absolute truth. The Word of God is the absolute truth. The Bible says, you know, that God is truth and let every man be a liar. Compared to God, you know, that is the truth. And we must stand on the truth. I don't know what the days are coming up to be. I don't know, I don't know how high these crazy prices are going to get to be. But I can tell you one thing, the higher they go, the tougher it is on people. And when, the, when they get squeezed, whatever's in them comes out. And so... Just be ready to serve Jesus and put him first no matter what happens because I'm going to tell you what, in the end, we're going to win. Yes. That's right. You know why? Because he's going to win. Uh, when it's all said and done, he is going to win. And we're on his side and he's our king and he's our shepherd and he's our Lord. So we have great confidence in this truth. And that is the truth. <laughs> Amen. God bless you all. Thank you for being here in the house of the Lord. We appreciate it tonight. Don't forget about Friday night for sure. Amen. Jerry, whip me if I didn't tell that. <laughs> no, I want you to be there. <laughs>